Stop. Make it stop. Stop! Maya, shut up. Oh my god. Hello, and welcome back to the... Well, finale of Simulacra 2, so I guess not welcome back, because you can't really come back to a finale. It's the only finale, although we did do ending episodes before. So maybe it is welcome back to the finale. I'm not sure. Anyway, this is probably the last episode of Simulacra 2, I believe. So I'm playing off, off, off camera, and I believe I've come up to what I think to be the ending. I don't know, though, for sure, because I was, I was doing this, and when I found, when I got to this post, I got, oh, you can like posts. I didn't know you could like posts. Great. When I got here, I got this thing, the price of pa influence, which was a clue thing that you can do. Hauntings. Video of Maya seeing things. I believe I've done all of this, but there, there's some weird, there, there's some weird stuff. Hold on. Ah, so this thing, this is, you scan this, and this allows you, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly, which I always, always am, this gets you access to a thread with Emily Wong, who tells you to find Adam DuPont, and then from there, we've done all this though, so we don't need to blah blah blah, but this is how you find this, because we did, we got that pop-up, and it, it's, uh, this is the chat thread of Adam DuPont, this is what I got to, I actually did unlock this, I didn't read any of it, it's, a, it's Maya asking for, it's bribing for contact info, which I believe here, contact, bribe, boom, done, that's what it is. And this is how, I think this is how we get closer to the Maya is the one who took the deal and got herself killed. Adam DuPont, this is Maya Crane. Sorry for the sudden messages. I literally had to bribe someone for your contact. It was hot tea, okay? I'm so sorry, but I was desperate. Emily told me about you and the Rippleman. I need to know if you'd used TRM or took its deal. Everyone I spoke to is either Mia, not M Maya, but Mia. M-I-A, missing in action, or acting weird. If you're seeing this, please answer me. I'm so scared. When was this? This was October 12th. The next day, October 13th, a very scary day. Hello, Maya. You there? Adam, was it? Wait, is it really you? Yes. Sorry, I had to go out of town, and the cell service there was really bad. So, you got caught up in TRM too, huh? Yes, I'm so sorry to dump all of this on you right now. I'm seeing things, hearing things. I have no idea what to do. I'm so scared. You too? You do realize what it means by sacrifice, right? It's really spreading, but I think I found something whilst I was away. The price of influ- Oh, look at this, we got a scan. An interview with Charlie Astor and the origin of the Rippleman. Whoa, okay, this is gonna be a lifesaver, but first let's figure- We will read this, and I will not forget. Awkward. What is this? Everything about the Rippleman might be in that article. I even tried tracking down that guy, but it was a dead end. I thought I could get his old phone. That's the key to ending all this. But he gave it away. I have no idea how to be even begin finding it now. Maybe the best thing you can do now is to just let it end with you. Lessen the spread. No! I dragged my friends into this mess. I'm not going to just give up. It says in the article that he auctioned off his belongings. He was huge, right? Uh, maybe I should have read the article first. Uh, surely some fan or something has it. It's a long shot, but I might know someone that might be able to help me with this. Oh? Well, good luck. What about you? What's going to happen to you? Same as Emily, I guess. A fake shell of myself. If I can find that totem, I can help- I'm reading the article. Alright, clearly I'm supposed to do this. Alright. <clears throat> By David Park, who wrote it, but that's not- I, I think it's what? Charlie Astor. I think that's the guy. So, what if- what if- this is probably a long shot, but I wouldn't put it past this game. What if freaking the guy sold his phone at an auction and Maya was the one who got it. I don't think the phone itself is haunted. I think it's like in the cloud or the internet or whatever, uh, the simulacra. But I, if the whole thing is you have to find his phone, the only phone that I have access to is this one, unless I get by it and it like shows up on my doorstep, like a package and I pick it up. That seems like a huge... Miss, like, st weird step for the game. I don't know. Okay. <laughs> no laptops or phones, right? Charlie Astor questions me urgently as I arrive at his home. He sheepishly, sheepishly inspects my digital tape recorder. Can't be too careful. Even <laughs> toasters are online these days. Not like you're gonna get any connection here. It's a signal dead zone. I've traveled miles to the middle of nowhere to Astor's lakeside cabin where he lives with his partner Jamie, or Jaime. It's a quaint and picturesque home. Odd only for lack of technology aside from a CRT television and a few lights. Not the kind of place you expect one of the world's most popular and influencers to be in. 
Orwell, former influencers, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's rich. In August 2016, Astor abruptly disappeared from the public guide, deleted all his social media accounts, and became a recluse. <laughs> Two years later, he seems eager to share his story with me. I jokingly ask about the overt caution against technology, and he answers in a quiet voice. It's because of the Ripple Man. See, it is so inconsistent with regards to if this is two words or one. I like it. I think it's funnier if it's one word, but I think it's realer and more scary if it's two words, because it's the Ripple Man and not the Ripple Man. Charlie's Lakeside, Cabin in the Woods. Is this supposed to be another swear? Three-letter swear word? Like, yes? Charlie Astor's initial claim to fame was a series on Kimura called Ripples. Ooh, the series focused on social media experiments that served as commentaries of online trends and behaviors. The name itself is a reference to the so-called ripple effect. I'm going to itch my nose real quick. You probably don't want to be privy to all this, but listen, if I have to suffer through this, you have to suffer through it. Ripple's classic hits include setting up a fake Chimera influencer account that managed to score dozens of million dollar endorsement contracts, creating a fake rags to riches persona that enthralled thousands before he outed himself, and a fake news campaign where he convinced a shockingly large number of people that the small town of Weefield did not exist. This reminds me a lot so far of uh, the I Am Sophie ARG. We're a fake uh, Instagram influencer account. Oh, Chimera, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Chimera. Influencer account that's faking people into believing that it's real. In a sea of trend hopping and clickbait content, Aster series was a breath of fresh air. And gain a call following. I want to show people how shallow all of this is, he said in a 2013 interview with us. We spend so much time worrying about likes and follows. It's crazy. Whoa. It's all a bit of fun. We shouldn't be taking it so seriously. Why so serious? That's what I say. Do you like my Joker impression? <laughs> ironically, Aster fit. Ironically, Aster failed to take his own advice. With popularity came the pressure of deep outing himself. What the hell did I just say? And why? Outdoing himself. He lost sight of himself. You know. Oh, this is Jamie. Uh, he was on a mission to make the world better. Better is how he wants to be. How he wants it to be. Aster is experiments, became darker, instigating fights among the homeless, baiting trolls on the notorious Seven Leet forums, okay, great, and mounted campaigns to cancel fellow influencers he found morally objectionable or disagreed with them. Even his most hardcore fans were starting to question his motives and methods. Then came the fame-infamous Comericon livestream in DEC 2015, which reached 20... 200, rather, million subscribers... views... Damn it. Before being scrubbed off the web. That's a lot of views. That's that's a lot of views. Filming on a humble Peril P13114, Aster starts a stream as his regular jovial, jovial self before devolving into a bizarre rant against social media users and horrifying threats against those in the influencer industry. A catastrophe of this level should end any influencer's future, but Aster found his career revitalized, reaching tens of millions of viewers, or hundreds of millions of viewers, or 20 million, as I so delicately put it before. Aster himself, however, believe. <laughs> Aster himself, however, believes that particular video marked the true start to his downfall. Oh, there's Charlie Aster. Here he is. He's a young dude. I, With a name like Charlie Aster, I feel like he would be older. I don't know why. So who is the Ripple Man? It takes him a while to answer. A god. He pauses, considering his words. This is weird. And I invoked it. Something happened when I was filming Chimericon. I channeled it onto my phone. Into my phone. Aster believes that his state of mind and obsession with exposing the wrongs of social media had willed a higher power into existence. One that was eager to take over its life, his life, for its own ends. It's taking over its life. It's a metaphor. He recounts the frightening experience events he experienced at the height of his fame. Reflections of himself were distorted. Tangled voices occupied his mind, and he felt a constant presence looming behind him. Okay. Worse were the blackouts, where he couldn't remember a thing. When he came to, he'd find new content published to his page. These gaps in memory intensified each time Aster tried to get off social media completely. It wouldn't let me go. It owned me. He says, so how did he beat a god? By cutting off its power supply. Literally, he replies with a humorous chuckle. <laughs> I found that weakness. Desperate for relief, Aster had taken to his childhood pastimes of camping and hiking. 
On these mini trips, he soon realized that the further he ventured from the city, the less he felt the presence. It's 5G. I knew it. However, when he returned, the blackouts doubled in duration and days would be lost on him. On one occasion, Aster found himself coming to in front of his bedroom mirror with an inexplicable urge to repeatedly bash his face into the glass. What is this, Twin Peaks? It's not Twin Peaks. It was primal. The cruel god read his thoughts. If that's what you wish, it teased. It has the same voice. And he did. While recovering from his injuries, Aster decided to end his connection to this god once in for all. Hmm. Hmm. Charlie taking a morning hike on the woods behind his cabin. This place is the perfect spot. Dead zone and all, Aster says, gesturing around the cabin. This place is the perfect spot. Dead zone and all. I like to believe that's a little bit how that went. Because I figured that things move through signals, transmissions, I even had a signal jammer as a backup just in case. To complete this makeshift ritual was on the phone that started it all, the same one he used to film the Comericon stream. It's like a totem, you know. The phone brought it to life, he says. Yet, he was about to hit delete. He froze, suddenly feeling the presence beside him. It felt like I was getting choked from the inside, Aster recalls. From Jamie's perspective, Aster was struggling and being flung about on his own. Yikes. He looked possessed, and for the first time, I could feel it too, says Jamie. Uh Uh-oh. Acting quickly, Jamie interviewed to erase the account, unbinding the connection between the two. So wait, Aster couldn't do it. So what, Jamie took the phone and did it himself? Or herself? I don't know if Jamie's a boy or a girl. After the encounter, Aster refused to leave the cabin, so Jamie picked it up, auctioned off all their belongings, and joined him here for a quiet, unexciting life. Ah, it's nice here. It's quiet. I think I'll take a nap. Oh, right, I'm doing a show. Uh, Okay, so it's perhaps the strangest explanation of the end of a promising influencer's career, one that raises even more questions than answers. Was this just another person cracking under the pressure of constant attention, a warning against social media is doing to our mental health? Or did Charlie Astor really have a brush with beings beyond our understanding? Whatever you think of Astor's story, I believe that he truly believes it. He still appears haunted by the experience, a shell of his former self. At least in this remote place, he seems to have found something that fans had never given him. Peace. Well, great! That's just happy news for him, right? He's, uh, that's, so, he's okay. I mean, presumably he's still out there. So, he's, he's good. He's, he's done it. He's beaten it. So, that means we can just, and it blocked you. Uh, a fake shell. Oh, same as Emily, I guess. A fake shell of myself. If I find that totem, I can help you too. Please, don't contact me anymore. I can't guarantee that I'll still be me. But do what you have to do. Help your friends. Save yourself. Great. Well, I don't know what we've actually learned from this. Did I get... We have this. This is nothing. We, 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 we seem to have... I don't think that we've... What did we learn here? Oh, I was able to say something, but now I can't. Wait, why was I able to say something, but now I can't? That's weird. Well, what the hell then? It literally said chats and I could do it, but now I can't do it. Wow, he is. Right, but like, frickin' why could I say something a second ago? And now what do I do? What the hell then? Alright, well, I guess... I, I, uh, I... Think... I'm at a standstill. This is awkward. Well, I'm going to be a little bit honest with you here. I am at a loss. I only have this to go on. I uh, have to find out if Rex could have taken the deal. I guess I was doing everything, and I got to the Rex situation. Because you can see that Mina and Arya are up at the top when it comes to the chats. Uh, But Rex is down here, so I haven't talked to him in a while. But I can't right now. And Arya, I was able to talk to for a second. So I think I have to restart... And it's going to make me lose progress because I haven't saved since I did all that stuff. Since this whole episode, I'm basically going to have to restart. But obviously, we're going to cut. I'm going to come back to it. But hopefully, I'll be able to actually speak with... Never mind. Never mind. That doesn't seem to be the thing. Great. Well, I... Okay, well, I restarted. Every time I restart, by the way, I have to watch this uh, video about Maya seeing things, and I can't skip it. Also, we have one more video that is still syncing, 
which I want to find. I don't know if we've ever seen this. I think in our first main playthrough, we didn't uh, friggin' get there, man. But I believe that the, the, the situation right now, because I, I, we can't do anything. There's nothing we can do. But I think what we want to figure out is this phone situation. I think we want to find the phone. He auctioned off his belongings. Surely some fan of his has it. So we have to find somebody who's mentioned Charlie Astor before. Uh, let's see where it mentions his old freaking stuff, man. Here's where it references it. Uh... Let's see if anything else says it. No, this is all it says. After the encounter, Astor refused to leave the cabin, so Jamie packed up, auctioned off all their belongings, presumably including the phone, and joined him here for a quiet, unexciting life. Right up here, they're talking about deleting the stuff from the phone, blah, blah, blah. So we don't know anything. All we know, there's this Jamie person. So let's see if anyone on Jabber references a Charlie... And or Jamie. Nothing on Jabber. Nothing on Jabber. Ugh. Nothing can come here either. Boy, I am really at a loss here. I feel like I should be able to chat with somebody. Is it possible that there's a glitch or am I... Is there something that I am supposed to do? Let's look it through the phone. Maybe there's somebody we can contact. Maybe Charlie Astor. Let's find out. No, not Charlie Astor. Maybe a Jamie. Let's find out. No, Justinia Fornia. Let's look at all of our contacts. Aluren Hotline. Ooh, maybe we could talk about, um, freaking Aria. Let's find out. Let's give us... Welcome to the Aluren Hotline. Thank you. Be you. Be alluring. I will. Press 1 to ask about our exclusive deals. I will ask about you. Press 2 to ask about our brand new loyalty program. That's not what I want. Press 3 to ask about our Muse program. might be 3. If you wish to return to the main menu at any time, please press 0. To follow up on your application as our Muse, please press 1. If you want to apply as one of our Muses, please press 2. Otherwise, press zero to return to our... Our muses are as unique as our products. To apply, simply drop by one of our retail stores and speak to our on-site liaisons and begin the application process. I can't. Everything will be followed up personally after that. Hope <gasps> to meet you very soon. <gasps> to go back, please press one. Nope. All right. Well, that was pointless. I don't think there's anything to do there. Aria, Eileen Prudence, uh, Brian Cope, and Blake, Brianna Souza. Detective Marullo! Dominique Marseille? Huh. Damn it, that's not very helpful at all, is it? Huh, ha, 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 ha. Well, I don't know, because we can't really do anything. We can't do anything here. There's not re- well, I... Oh, oh, whoa, okay. Oh. We downloaded a schedule. Why? Oh, we're zooming in. Oh, we can't like scroll up and down. We can only like zoom in and zoom out. This, this is bizarre. I have no idea why they would program this into the game. <laughs> what, what use could this possibly be? What can I do with this? Maybe this is something. Maybe it, maybe it is something. Let's see if it's something. Uh, we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then Sunday. That's the days of the week for sure. Hmm, what day is today? Today is... I don't know. There's no way of knowing. It doesn't have a... There's no calendar app on this phone. Well, we have that. I don't know why. Oh, well. Well, <clears throat> I am gonna go out on a limb and say that there this is a bug because I, I actually... I've been looking it up. I've spent the last, like, 20 minutes... Yeah. Wow. Uh, going th over the internet and trying to see what I could find if I was... Sp I, I looked up Charlie Astor Simulacra 2, Charlie Astor phone, and I this is literally what I found, which is completely unrelated. Uh, so I, I think... I, I And I've found a lot of people saying that they've encountered bugs and things, so I'm going to go ahead and assume that I'm supposed to be able to do something here. If I look at the objectives, it's talking about Rex. I've even looked at these hints and look for Rex's post, but I already have all of this. Like, I've, I've done all this, and I've, I've gone through every Chimera post, every Jabber post, and none of them have unlocked anything. I still can't talk to Rex, which I think I'm supposed to be able to do right now. It doesn't seem like there's anything I can do to find this phone. 
So I'm gonna, I'm like completely locked out of progressing through the game. I've unlocked most things. There's still one more thing from Maya's laptop and uh, some songs that I don't care about, but I am pretty sure there's nothing, and I have no, no, uh, if I go to the warden, I can't talk to Marillo. Like, I can't do that. That's not a thing I can do. Whoops. Oh, I thought I... Oh, did I unlock something? No. I have no more uh, clues to look for. I have seem to have done everything that I can. So I even looked up this and I was trying to find city records for... Because he talked about Wayfield, Wayfield or whatever in the article. So I looked that up and I couldn't find anything. So there's not really much I can do. So unfortunately, this is how our Simulacra 2 series ends. I'll put out this video. It's going to come out on Tuesday. And if anybody comes up with anything that I can do, if anybody has experienced this before, let me know about it. Uh, and like, let me know what I should do in the comments. I am at a complete loss. And I kind of feel bad that this is how <laughs> this series is ending. But what can you do? I mean, I literally can't do anything that I know of. So uh, I will come back to this if I can figure out what to do, but for now, this is going to be the final episode of Simulacra 2. It's going to end like this. Tomorrow, I'm starting a new game, and it's actually an older game. It's the precursor to all of these. It's called Sarah is Missing. It is the original Simulacra, and it came out before all those. Um, I, I, I haven't played it. I did open it up to see if I could, if it would run, and uh, it does, and it looks like a very older, rudimentary version of this. It's the kind of same thing, where you have a phone, it's a mystery. Um, so I'm really interested in that. That's kind of why I wanted to play these games, was I heard about the original one. So I'm really interested in going back to play that and see how it's different, and I think it's a shorter game, so it should only be a couple episodes. So, I'm going to go do that. <laughs> That'll be tomorrow. Uh, if you saw today's earlier post about the quality of the previous videos, then um, you'll know that my, that today, being Tuesday, there will not be a second episode today. So tomorrow there will be two episodes, but the first of which being Sarah's Missing. None of this super matters, so I'm going to end the episode. But let me know in the comments if there's anything I can try to do, because, oh my god, <laughs> this is ridiculous. I can't think of anything, so... Let me know, and I hope to see you again. Thanks for being with me on this bizarre journey, and uh, thanks for watching. Bye, everyone.